this guy comes up to me and just as calm as he can be, he says, hey, I need you to come look at this machine. The indicator comes down and it just keeps going. It don't stop. And I'm sitting there thinking, indicator? What's he talking about? I'm like, yeah, dude, we'll go check it out, see what's going on. So I walk with him over to his machine. I open the door and I see the HSK spindle rammed down into the fixture. The fixture is mounted on a five axis trunnion table and the gears are obviously broke in it because the fixture is leaning further than it's supposed to be able to rotate. And at this point, my mind is blown because I was not expecting to see this at all. By his demeanor, I was expecting to see like a test indicator up in the spindle and he was in hand jog mode or something like that. But the indicator that he was referring to was the, actually the spindle probe, which was now all smashed up into the fixture. I could hear him behind me talking about this other machine. And I was like, dude, why are we talking about this other machine? Do you not see this machine right here that's crashed? And when I back up and I look over, we don't have one crash machine, we have two crashed machines. He opens the door and this machine sitting right next to it is in the exact same position. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what happened, dude? And he just shrugs his shoulders. He's like, I don't know, I was at break. I was like, what do you mean you don't know? Was you not running these machines? And he was like, yeah, I set this machine up and then I set the other one up and I hit go on both of them and then went to break. This guy knew better than to do something like this. He had been with the company for several years and he knew what our standard procedure was when running a new program. But what really got to me is how he didn't feel anything. He had no sense of responsibility. We had to get both spindles replaced rebuild both trunnion tables, new probes, rebuild the fixtures, and even the Z-axis had to be realigned on both machines. The total cost for this crash was over $200,000, and we lost two weeks of production. This wasn't even my project, and it was making me sick to my stomach looking at the damage. If he had been standing there at the machine going through it slowly like he was supposed to do since the program had been modified, then he possibly would have caught that the tool length offset was left out of the program so the length of the probe was not being compensated for. He may have even been able to catch it before the machine crashed or at least stopped it after the probe had broke. But instead we had two crash machines and $200,000 worth of damage. This guy felt all he was required to do was run parts and if anything went wrong he could just always point the finger to someone else. If the parts were bad, it's the programmer's fault. If the machine crashes, it's also the programmer's fault. If the micrometers were out of calibration, causing all the parts to be bad, then it's quality's fault. But at the end of the day, you have to take pride in your own work. You have to have passion for what you do. It is your responsibility to make sure you have everything you need. If you don't, let someone know, hey, I'm trying to be successful over here, and in order to do that, I need these things. Don't use the excuse that you can blame it on somebody else to get out of having responsibility. As a programmer, you need to go through everything with a fine tooth comb and make sure that what you're putting out on the floor is the best it can be and give the machinist or operator running the parts the best chance at making good parts. Make sure you give them all available information because they are running blind if you don't. If you're an operator, you need to have your programmers back and watch the program closely because they can and will make mistakes and often overlook things. And just because you didn't program the part doesn't mean you can't take pride and ownership in machining it. Likewise, your quality team is not there to check your parts for you. They are there as a last line of defense for the company to catch a potential bad part from leaving the facility. I wish I could tell you that this guy learned his lesson and the company put stricter policies in place for accountability. But instead, a few weeks after this happened, they promoted him to senior level machinist and gave him a big raise. What's the worst crash you ever seen? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help support free education and we'll see y'all next time.